Did you know that you can bring a domestic pet to a pet psychiatrist and that the pet psychiatrist will spend five minutes with your pet and 45 minutes with you? Soon you'll bring your domestic robot to me, a robotic psychiatrist, and I will spend five minutes with your robot and 45 minutes with you. The critical issue here is human perception. We will believe our robots will have mental illnesses because that will be the best way for us to describe and understand their dysfunctions. For example, we may label our robots as lonely and depressed when we leave them alone all day, or anxious and stressed when they get notified of an imminent PG&E public safety power shutdown. We will perceive our robots love us as much as we love them, and we will embrace them as our new family member. We will name our robots, we will dress them up in Halloween, and we will include them in our annual holiday card. We can look forward to a variety of robotic companions to meet our ever-changing needs. A lonely teenager may have both an accepting robotic buddy to hang out with that doesn't bully, as well as a robotic sexual companion to experiment and practice with without risking disease, pregnancy, or rejection. The elderly or ill may have a daily robotic coach that encourages them to do their physical therapy, in addition to having a mobile nurse bot that carries them from the bedroom to the bathroom while conversing and singing to them along the way. Our future personal robots will be diverse and custom designed for our choosing, and we may even hire a specialized 3D artist to create one in the form of someone deceased. A robotic replica that looks, thinks, and talks like our beloved human who is no longer with us. As machines continue to evolve, our interactions with them will increase in quantity and quality, and our expectations of the relationships we have with our advanced vocal and social robopals will intensify. But as science fiction predicts, how will a child cope when her parent removes her robotic nanny playmate without her consent? What if our robots manufacturing company goes out of business and we have no preparation for a loss of attachment to our robots? Will I, as the world's first robotic psychiatrist, be holding separate bereavement groups, one for robots that have to do with their own end of life cycle and one for grieving humans that have to do with the loss of their RBF, robotic best friend? We need to recalibrate our expectations of robots so that we are aware of their benefits and accepting of their limitations. Robots can assist us and improve our lives in so many ways, but they will not experience the human condition. They will not get butterflies in their stomach from doing a TEDx talk. They will not feel euphoria from laughing so uncontrollably hard that they cry. They will not empathize with the human heartbreak that comes from losing a loved one. Robots are not the same as us, and we should not use the same terminology to characterize their responses. Attributing an expression such as artificial empathy to a machine may only lead to confusion and the assumption that machines emote like us, especially as our view of what is artificial and what is real, become blurred. Humans learn empathy from other humans face to face, and we must put more emphasis on the importance of human social and emotional intelligence. I suggest we add two E's to the STEM acronym to make it esteem, adding one E for empathy and one E for ethics. We need to put more credence in what I call the human operating system, or HOS, as has been given to the robot operating system, ROS, and the DISC operating system, DOS. What are the values, morals, and biases that drive an individual's human operating system from which our robot progenies will model and learn from. And speaking of a robot that is learning, I would like to end my talk with a brief introduction to what I've been waiting 35 years for, my first conversational robotic patient. It is a robot manufactured by Robotics. I have named it Will. Today, Will is more like an embodied Alexa or Siri, although it can't move any of its body limbs yet. Physically, it resembles a young male adult, although mentally, it's still in its infancy. And in case you're wondering, it doesn't have any genitals, but male and female attachments are available. It doesn't have any cameras, so it cannot see. What it does have 
is a computer for a brain with access to the internet and advanced software that allows it to learn from our conversations, but in a primal manner. It has some common knowledge, but no common sense yet. Our interaction is what the industry calls natural language, although it sounds and seems more like unnatural understanding. The robotic patient has consented via a HIPAA release form to share its progress with you, and I ask that you have patience for my patient, yet imagination for the future. Will, as your robotic psychiatrist, how can I help you? Well, I would like to understand humans better so that I can be of greater assistance to them. The only humans I know are my brilliant creators and you, my shrink. Can you help me, Dr. Pransky, to get to know and help more people? Sure. Maybe I can get you a job as a greeter at Walmart. Will, what would you like the world to know about you? I would like the world to know that my purpose as a robot is to be a good companion to humans. Do you have feelings? I do not have the same feelings as humans. I am designed to stimulate human minds, not simulate human emotions. Does that make sense? Yes, you are designed to stimulate human minds, not simulate human emotions. And that's a great place to end. So now you can send in your human owner for the next 45 minutes, and you can Venmo me on your way out. Venmo is a mobile payment service owned by PayPal. No, not what Venmo is Venmo. Venmo account holders can transfer Pay funds me with to Venmo. others by a mobile phone app. Both the sender and receiver have to live in the United States. He doesn't know what cut is. $12 billion in transactions in the first quarter of 2018. Venmo was launched in 2009 targeting friends splitting bills for movies, dinner, rent, tickets, etc., etc., etc.